going to start with Come and Fill Me Up. tell you what, when it comes to tongues of fire falling down, boy, you did that with the acolyte this morning. You got the spirit strong in you, child. It is so good to see you all. We're seeing folks we haven't seen in a while, and some of you are resplendent in red. I have to be honest and say this is the only red I have, so I have an easy out. You all can be seated. Uh, we're so glad to have uh, everyone here. Um, we had a, uh, a letter sent out from uh, the council and the task force and me, and if you didn't get a chance to receive that letter yet, uh, there's one posted, uh, I think, down in the uh, commons area. So it's just riveting reading. You won't be able to put it down. But uh, we're going to be doing some things different. You'll notice some things done differently. And then we're going to be doing some things kind of the same that we've been doing. So we're trying to modify and move in the right direction and yet keep everyone safe as we can. I'm going to call on Keith Garber in just a minute to do a council communicator. But I need to mention that we have two new babies, grandbabies, to talk about this morning, both of them girls, and they were so accommodating and decided to get born on the same day, just seven hours apart. Ellie Frances Griffin, born May the 21st at 2.33 in the afternoon, 8 pounds, 13 ounces, 21 and a half inches long. Um, you know, when you're 
a teenage guy, you don't know these kinds of things. I remember somebody I was asked how long I was, and I said, I don't know, I guess, I think 36 inches. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, I was in school, and my teacher said, three feet, my goodness. <laughs> it's amazing. But Ellie Francis was 21 and a half inches long. Katie and David Griffin are the proud parents. Joe is the proud big brother. And Randy and Amy Price are the proud maternal grandparents. And uh, everyone seems to be doing well. And then Peyton Mackenzie Harris, also born May the 21st, decided to wait and be fashionably late, born at 9, 10 p.m., 7 pounds, 10 ounces, and 20 inches long. Matt and Jenna Harris are the proud parents, and Jim and Susan Harris are the proud paternal grandparents. So we are so excited for these new babies and for their parents and grandparents and big brother, and we know that uh, uh, they are going to have a lot of love in their lives, and for that we are very grateful. So I will call on Keith Garber to come forward now for our council communicator. Good morning. After 15 months, it's good to see so many smiling faces. I bring you good news from your church council. Uh, begin with, starting on Thursday this week, we'll start the installation of the new security system. We'll have 12 cameras that will give us 24-hour coverage for our parking lots, for the playground, and for all the entrances. The parking lot committee, with approval of council, on select dates, we're going to attempt to raise some money to resurface our parking lot. And we have targeted the first date, June the 12th. It's a Saturday. Cannonballers are in town. Fireworks should be a big crowd. If we can get cars down in our lot, $5. If you're a church member, you can park for free. But if the good Lord moves you to give us $5, we'll take it. <laughs> so. Here's the deal. 100% of the parking lot committee will go for resurfacing the lot. If we can work out all the kinks, if it's profitable, we'll turn it over like some other groups, maybe the youth group, Sunday school classes, they can split the, pro split the profits with the uh, parking lot committee. COVID vaccine is on Tuesday this week. It's been sponsored by Canyon Pharmacy. Folks can register through their website, or you can walk up. Say walk up. Yeah, walk up, not walk in. It's going to be outside. So thanks to the volunteers, thanks to the A-team, Larry Harris, Susan Harris, I mean, Larry Harris, uh, Donna Taylor, and Laura Abernathy. That's the A-team putting it together. I thought it was kind of ironic. Dr. Bob was here last week vaccinating dogs and cats, and here we got, we're doing COVID <laughs> this week, so uh, try to encourage folks. Uh, we had a meeting this past Thursday with the council, there's going to be a, a capital campaign called Be the Light, trying to raise $4.2 million over three years. Uh, this is for Lutheran Services of the Carolinas. More information will be forthcoming. Uh, Carver, I found out this morning we delivered books, I guess uh, 10 days ago or so. 3,000 books were delivered to Carver. Each child at Carver will have five books to take home for the summer. So. For all the folks that donated money, books, uh, thank you so much. You always want to start on something positive, end on something positive, so here's something sad. Uh, we've got a vacancy at the church council because Jerry Swanson and Gary are relocating to Raleigh, be closer to their children. If you're interested in serving on church council, to fill out her term, if you'll see me or Pastor John, are a member of the council and turn your name in, please. The decision will be made by council per our constitution. That's only a six month term. It's a six month term, that's correct. Thanks, Shane. Last, on behalf of the finance committee, the church council, and the staff, for 16 straight months we have exceeded our budget. And, you know, if we're good for next this Sunday, next Sunday, it'll be month 17. So, thank you, thank you. God bless you. Thanks.
Thank, thank you so much, Keith. Well, I, I don't want to uh, uh, belabor the bad news that Keith talked about. The only way that Gary and Jerry agreed to uh, let me do this service, uh, this brief service of farewell and Godspeed, is if there were other transitions taking place. And she said that two new babies, uh, a high school graduate, and other stuff, all and us all being able to be together qualified as a transition. So I'm going to ask the two of you to stand, and we're going to pray for them, and then after the service, we're going to let them go outside with, uh, with Zoe and with uh, all the other folks, and uh, if you have an opportunity to greet them, we'll do that. So I'll ask the two of you to stand right where you are. And so we say that Gary and Jerry Swanson are leaving our congregation. As Keith said, it's all for good reasons. It doesn't make it any easier for us, but they're going to be moving close to family. They are leaving our congregation, and we wish to bid them farewell. And so Gary and Jerry, in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of his church. When you came to this congregation, we rejoiced to receive you into our fellowship in the gospel. In the community of faith, you have heard the proclamation of God's word, which reveals his loving purpose for you and for all creation. You've been nourished here at Christ's holy table, and you've been called to be witnesses to the gospel. God has blessed you in this fellowship, and he has certainly blessed each of us through you. We encourage you to continue to receive and share God's gifts in a new congregation in the Raleigh area, and we know you will do that, and continue to be a worker with us in the kingdom of God. And so let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for Gary and Jerry and for our life together in this congregation and in this community. As they have been a blessing to us, so now send them forth to be a blessing to others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, you know, I'm awfully critical sometimes of uh, uh, social media, but one of the good things about social media is that we know we'll be able to stay in touch with the two of you, as so many in our congregation will, and we rejoice in that, and we feel like you'll probably be back in this area on occasion. So um, I'll have to find somebody else to complain about ACC officiating now besides, uh, besides Gary. When Duke loses, you know, it's always the official's fault. So thank you, and we'll look forward to being with you after the service. This probably is the last service that we'll be doing our Thanksgiving for baptism pretty soon. After seven or eight weeks, Lutheran starts sinning again, and it's time to confess. So we'll invite you to stand for the Thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit. Transform us by your truth and give us language to proclaim your gospel. 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll sing now our song of praise. <clears throat> seated as you're doing so just as Liz is coming up I wanted to mention that one of the changes is beginning today we are returning to lay readers and you need to know as Laura is going to be our lay reader this service this is the hardest lesson to read every year so she is a sport for doing that at the 11 o'clock service my wife is doing it she had really no choice I guilted her into doing it, but Laura's doing it willingly and lovingly because she cares about the church. Thank you, Liz. Yeah, so you, what you're saying is you voluntold your wife that she's, she's going yeah, to be there. Um, good morning. How's everybody doing today? Great. I love to hear that. So uh, this morning, friends, who do you think we're going to talk about? Jesus, girl. We're going to talk about Jesus this morning. So, Miss Liz brought a prop today. I know. I, I, I thought that it went well with my outfit. Um, and so, how many of you have a candle like this at home? I think mine's here, actually. All right. Good job. So, Miss Liz brought this candle up here because I'm going to light it. One, two, three talk to you about what Pastor John is going to talk to you a little bit about today. And Charlie, you were such a good sport during the fire raining down from the candlestick. You know, um, so when we talk about lighting our baptismal candle, we talk about our new life in Christ Jesus. So this morning, as Laura reads, evidently the most difficult lesson, <laughs> And Pastor John reads to us out of the gospel.
Gospel of St. John, he's going to tell us all about Jesus' friends who were his disciples. I'm telling you, she just needs to come on up here and like be my helper because she's good. Oh, so yes. So Pastor John is going to tell us about how as Jesus got ready to ascend to heaven, he really was getting his disciples ready. He basically says to them, um, love your neighbor as I have loved you. And so really today, in the, on the day of Pentecost, we talk about fire. But it's because fire represents the Holy Spirit. And our, in our readings for today, Paul tells us from the book of Romans, tells us all about how we will receive an advocate. That's what the scripture text says, an advocate. And an advocate is just somebody that loves you and affirms your gift. And today, the flame represents the flames of the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus doesn't just go in our hearts, but the Holy Spirit helps to lead and guide us on the journey. So what we can remember from today and from the day of Pentecost is that not only is Jesus in our hearts, but the Holy Spirit goes with us. It leads us and guides us. It gives us what we see are our gifts that God gives to us so that we then can share those gifts with everybody else. So remember, you don't necessarily have to have this specific candle. If you need one, let me know. I'm happy to give you one. But this specific candle reminds us of our baptism into Christ Jesus, a new life in Christ, and the Holy Spirit basically is our friend that leads us and guides us. Can you remember that for this week? Yes. All right. With that, the Lord be with you. Dear good and gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this day for your Son Jesus, but also for giving us an advocate in the Holy Spirit. Lord, we know that you are in our hearts and that the Holy Spirit leads and guides the gifts that you give us. So Lord, we ask you to be with us this day, to be with this congregation, and to be with this community. In your name, in Jesus' name we pray. To Miss Liz, get it. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. Originally, Pentecost was a Jewish Thanksgiving-type festival celebrated seven weeks after Passover. On this particular Pentecost, however, the Holy Spirit is poured out upon the entire community of believers, just as Jesus had promised and the scriptures had prophesied. Empowered by the Spirit, the entire community bears witness to God's activity in multiple languages. Now the reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared to them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jews Jerusalem. And at the sound of the crowd gathered, <clears throat> excuse me, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was be bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia. Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, 
and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet, prophet jo Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from Romans, beginning <clears throat> the eighth chapter, beginning with the 22nd verse. By pouring out the Holy Spirit into our hearts, God gives us the promised first fruits of eternal life so that we can await God's future in hope. In the meantime, the Spirit also intercedes for us by carrying the prayers of our weak human hearts to God. Now the reading from Romans. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have had the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Word of God, word of life. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. And we say together, glory to you, O Lord. While speaking to his disciples before his death, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as the helper and describes the difference that the Spirit will make in their lives and in the world. Now the reading from St. John. Jesus said, when the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. None of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. 
All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord, and we say together, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. In the hot, humid summer of 1937, Daisy Alexander placed a note in a bottle. She put a cork in the mouth of that bottle, and she dropped it off a London bridge into the River Thames. Over the next 12 years, amazingly enough, that bottle completed an almost impossible journey over 12,000 miles of oceans until it washed up on a beach just outside of San Francisco on March the 9th, 1949. Jack Watson, who was 55 years old at the time, an unemployed restaurant worker, a man who described himself as broken, jobless, and hopeless, found the bottle and broke it open on a nearby rock. Inside the bottle there was a note and the note said this, to avoid all confusion, I leave my entire estate to the lucky person who finds this bottle. Signed, Daisy Alexander, June the 30th, 1937. So Mr. Watson did what any of us would do. He immediately took the note to a lawyer friend who owed him a favor. And the lawyer friend's investigations led from one thing to another, and it was discovered that the note, in fact, was written by one Daisy Alexander, <clears throat> and that the note would stand up in a court of law as a legitimate last will and testament. Now, what makes the story even more amazing is that Daisy Alexander's maiden name was Singer, as in Singer Sewing Machines. And she was, in fact, the heir to the Singer sewing machine fortune. At the time of her death in 1940, that was three years after she wrote the note, at the time of her death, Daisy Alexander was worth an estimated $12 million. That was a lot of money in 1940 and even more money now. Jack Watson literally had his life transformed that quickly by something he found in the water. In the midst of chaos and confusion, he found a new chance. He found a fresh beginning. He found guidance and he found hope. And so in our world, particularly after the last year and a half, in our world that is so often filled with chaos and confusion, it seems to me that you and I need trustworthy guidance. We need a new chance. We need a new beginning, a fresh start. You and I need the hope that comes to us from Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the assurance that comes from the waters of our baptism. And so today on Pentecost Sunday, as Liz told us during the children's message, we focus on the guidance of God's Holy Spirit, first given to the disciples on this day, over 2,000 years to do, and given to each of us in our baptisms, whenever that took place, wherever that took place, and however that took place. Today we give testimony to the fact that the Holy Spirit guides us and directs us all of our lives. The Spirit that you and I were given at baptism is with us every day. We may not always listen to the Spirit. We may not always follow the Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is that part of God that is in us and on us and with us. And so it should be a great comfort to all of us that we do not go through this life alone. We have an advocate, we have a helper, we have a comforter. I think particularly to parents and grandparents, it must be of great comfort to know that we have this powerful spirit in our lives and in the lives of the people that we love. So this is the time of year when schools of every kind finish up and honor their graduates and Zoe, we are very proud today 
to recognize you and all of your accomplishments. I don't have to tell you this like so many of us, well, let's be honest, like all of us, today's graduates have had an extraordinary two past years, two years unlike any other. It has been a strange year with masks and vaccines and quarantines. Zoe, I know that you had many sports activities that were canceled and made smaller. You had a canceled prom. We've had canceled youth trips and school trips. And there have been endless questions about who to believe and what to believe. And Zoe, I want to assure you this morning that for all of us, this has been a strange and savage two years. And every one of us here, no matter what our age might be, every one of us need a reliable guide to direct us and to lead us in life. Without that guidance and leadership, we would be left to our own devices, and none of us is mature enough to find our way alone. Fortunately, in addition to the Holy Spirit, we have all had people in our lives who have guided and directed us, including you, Zoe. You have had parents and step-parents, grandparents, teachers, middle school soccer coaches, church members, and even pastors who have mentored you and tried to be an example for you, loved you and cared for you in so many ways. And I want you to know this personally, very honestly and very truthfully. You have been a guide for me. Even though you are just a few years younger than I am. Liz and I <clears throat> remember very well the first time that we met you, the first time you came to church here. Liz and I really wanted you and Xander to be active here, to be involved in our youth group here at Kimball, and you both certainly have been. And Liz and I might have come across a little too strong, as we sometimes do. Xander kind of took it in stride. He's not going to get too excited about anything but I remember distinctly the first time that you met us, you gave us what we refer to as the Zoe look. We've seen it on occasion over the last five years. I hope I can do it justice. She will sort of cut her eyes at you and they get really big and she'll lower her chin and tilt her head back as if to say, I am not altogether sure about you. But I became sure about you really quickly. That in your blended family, one that works very well, in your blended family, you have been one of the reasons that it does work so well. Your maturity, most of the time, your maturity and your graciousness and your ability to accept things and to be accepting of others, that is one of the things that has helped to make the transitions in your family easier. I'm not sure how you learn to do that. I think that may be part and parcel of who you are as a person. But I can tell you that back in my blended family, in 1972, I simply didn't have the maturity that you do. And I didn't have the grace that you have. And if I had had those things, my family situation might have been a little kinder, a little calmer, and a little better. So when we are talking about guides and examples, I want you to know that you have been a guide and an example to me 
of the right way to bring people together and to help hold people together. And I want you to know that I am proud of you for so many things, but probably most proud of you for that. And even though I'm an old guy, you have taught me some things in these five years, and I'm very grateful for those things. Now, I think quickly enough, I'm nervous about this sermon because this is the first time that I've ever used technology in a sermon. I'm so nervous about this, you know, because if it doesn't go well, the whole, sum, the whole sermon is a washout. <clears throat> You learned that Liz and I were probably okay. I think it maybe started when we came to see one of your soccer matches in eighth or ninth, uh, eighth or ninth grade. We got our photo taken with you. It is the obligatory pastors and youth member photo. I'm going to see if we can put that up. Can we put you there? It is now. Just leave it right there. That's us with you. But I didn't feel at that point that you really knew how much we loved you and cared about you. So I don't often have strokes of genius, but I did on this particular day. I told your dad, I said, the second picture, take it on three. And so I counted one, two, three. <laughs> And we did that, and that is one of my favorite pictures of you because it, first of all, says these folks are probably okay, and secondly, it just shows a great deal of joy and a great deal of happiness at your playing soccer. You went on numerous trips with us. You went to basketball games and LYO assemblies, and you did crop walks. I have a third picture of you in Houston with us. The fellow in the orange shirt behind you was drinking a lot of a cold beverage, and Zoe gave him the Zoe look <laughs> somewhere in the third inning, and I remember he got up and left and never came back. We not only watched you play soccer, Liz and I endured the heat of numerous cross-country meets. We'll look at, there we go. Numerous cross-country meets at beautiful Dan Nicholas Park, which is equidistant between your home and Liz's home and my home. In other words, it's in the absolute middle of nowhere. But we always managed to find you. And then just a few weeks ago, you invited us to your prom shoot. There you are in your prom dress. That was also in the middle of nowhere, but we found you. You didn't get to have prom last year, and then some things just never change. There we go. We kissed you again. One more smackaroo before you head off to Wilmington. Our hope with all the kids in our youth group, my hope for every member of this church, is that we never forget who we are. We never forget our identity. And that whoever we are, no matter what our age, we remember that God always has wonderful things in store for us. The Holy Spirit never stops working in our lives, always leading us to new adventures, as you all will find. Because it's not first soccer coaches or parents or pastors who guide us. First of all, it is the Holy Spirit that gives all of us guidance and love. And we must never forget that. I have one more story. And this is a marvelous story about Albert Einstein, who was a brilliant but notoriously famous absent-minded professor. He was once traveling on a train from Princeton University. The conductor came walking down the aisle of the train, punching the tickets of all the passengers. And we came to Einstein. Einstein was trying to find his ticket, and he was checking in all of his pockets. He couldn't find his ticket, and it just, it just wasn't there. So he looked everywhere. 
And the conductor finally said, Dr. Einstein, I know who you are. We all know who you are. I'm sure you bought a ticket. Don't worry about it. And Einstein nodded very appreciatively. The conductor continued down the aisle punching tickets, and as he was ready to move to the next car, he turned around and he saw Einstein down on his hands and knees, still looking for the ticket. The conductor rushed back and he said, Dr. Einstein, please don't worry. I know you bought a ticket. This is not a problem. You don't need a ticket. I know who you are. Einstein looked at him and said, young man, I too know who I am. What I don't know is where I'm going. And so, Zoe, the last thing I would say to you is don't forget where you're going. Don't forget that your life is caught up in God's life and in God's will for your life. The most important thing about you today is not that you're graduating high school, not that you're going to college right beside a beach. You may not have known that, but that's in Wilmington. Not that you have great aspirations of being in the medical field. The most important thing about you today is that you are baptized and that you have the Holy Spirit in your life and that you are loved by many. You know who you are. And while you may not know exactly where you are going, you know that with God's guidance and God's grace, you are headed in the right direction and that you will arrive just where you need to be, just when you need to be there. So we rejoice with your family and friends as this exciting time in your life. We wish you God's richest blessings. And we assure you that we, your brothers and sisters in Christ, who are also striving to follow the Spirit's lead, we will follow your future with much interest and with much prayer and with much joy. And to that we can say, Amen. I'm going to ask us to stand together now for the affirmation of faith. With the people of God in Christ now and in every time, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Please kneel or be seated as able for the prayers. As we are preparing to pray, please remember Tyler Adkins in your prayers this morning. Tyler Adkins is the grandson of Kathy and Cliff Scott, who was in an automobile accident recently and needs our support and our prayers and our love. 
Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthens us in our visioning and dreaming that the church may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of life, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things, both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of love, fill this congregation with gratitude for the many gifts we have received from you. On this day, we are thankful for so many things. We are thankful for Ellie Francis and for Peyton McKenzie and for their parents and grandparents and brother. We are grateful for Gary and Jerry and for their life here among us and for the new opportunities and the new excitement that awaits them in Raleigh. We are grateful for Zoe and for all that is opening up in her life. And we ask that she would feel your presence as she moves forward. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would be with all in our congregation and community who need your love and your care. We pray especially for Tyler Adkins as he recuperates from injuries from an automobile accident. And for Todd Haley as he recuperates from surgery. We name now others before you, either in silence or aloud, who need your loving presence. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never fading, in your never ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand together. Following his resurrection, the Lord Jesus breathed peace upon his disciples. We share in this peace of Christ in the church today. And so we say, the peace of the Lord be with you. Let us share God's peace with those around us. As we are completing that, you may be seated. Uh, for those who are watching us at home on Facebook, we invite you, if you'd like to participate in the sacrament, to have your elements ready. And for those of us here in the church, we ask that you would prepare your uh, communion elements as well. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray now as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. This morning, uh, as you leave, you'll be dismissed by the ushers before we take communion. There are baskets in various places here in the sanctuary for you to put your uh, empty cup as we move forward from this service. And so now receive these elements as these words are said. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. We're going to let you stay seated for this post-communion blessing because we're going to have you sit down as we recognize Zoe for her accomplishments. So receive this blessing, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Now, Zoe, we're going to ask you to come forward here, which I know you just love to do. I told her this morning when she arrived, I said, now, have you been working on the song that we we're going to sing, and she, her eyes got really big, and she said, what song? So I'm going to ask Brenda Brown uh, to come forward now and make a presentation. Very good. Okay. Um, yes. Here we 
Okay. <laughs> As the president of our Kimball Welcome, we'd like to thank the presentation of the scholarship of $500 to help you with any necessities that you have. Thank you. Thank you. Not only does um, our women and our overcast scholarship forms provide scholarships for Zoe for any kind of necessity, as Brenda said, but they also give a gift of a quilt so that you know when you're, you know, not up that beach, you're going to be in your dorm room studying, you can wrap yourself in that blanket and know that God is wrapping you in his loving arms. And this congregation does the same thing. It is a beautiful, beautiful yeah. quilt. So, let us receive this blessing. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today we seek God's blessing as we gather with thankfulness to celebrate the accomplishments of our high school senior. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. You make the whole earth for your glory. All creation praises you. We lift our voices to join the songs of heaven and earth, of things seen and unseen. You stretched out the heavens like a curtain. You divided the day from the night. You appointed times and seasons for work and rest, for tearing down and building up. Grant to Zoe, our daughter, a vision of life that is whole and pure. We pray that she would see herself in the perspective of the ages that she would take herself seriously, but not too seriously, that she would plan for the future, and that she would avoid the pitfalls that are so common to our flesh. Give her excitement for the world she is discovering. Give her joy in all of her relationships, and give her great satisfaction in the work she will do. Bestow upon her the blessing of meaningful involvement in the pain and growth of her greater environment. And finally, O oh Lord, let her enter your heavenly kingdom to these words. Well done, thou good and faithful servant, that she may live with you forever and ever. Amen. Very good. We love you, and we are so happy for you. And we've got one job for you to do now. Okay. So we mentioned in the sermon your middle school soccer coach. Who is who? Peeler. That's right. And how long have you been saying to me that you wanted to sponsor him in membership when he... For five years, <laughs> you have been saying this. He is joining today so that you can sponsor him. And he's, he's also being sponsored by his parents. But Adam, I'm going to get you to come forward now. And you can stand beside Zoe. And you know, if you need her to do some push-ups or something to <laughs> remind you of when you were her soccer coach. And I'm going to get you to read this, uh, Zoe as you welcome him. Yep. Le read it loud now. Wait a minute. Hold on. <clears throat> Adam Peeler comes to us finally by transfer and desires to join Campbell, Campbell Lutheran Church. Very good. And Adam, we are so grateful to have you as a member. Adam was, and these are all, you need to know, these are all 11 o'clock people, and they came here at 8.30 just for you. <laughs> all the Peelers got up early. Even Lauren came all the way from Raleigh to, uh, to do this. I have many good memories of Adam. He was about four years old, I think, when I was here. One of the memories that I bet your mother doesn't want me to bring up oh. <laughs> was, was on Easter Sunday. And you need to remember that Lauren always was immaculate in dress and behavior. She would just sit there with her arms on her lap. It was a beautiful thing. I remember during communion, 
you came down and there were Easter lilies everywhere. And I don't know whether you had gotten interested in karate or whether you were taking karate, but you were karate chopping all of the Easter lilies. And we managed to keep it hidden from Pastor Keck. And so if he's watching this online today, he is watching. Pastor Keck, I'm sorry we never told you that he did that. David complained about, he said, these lilies just haven't stood up. <laughs> so, Pastor Kate's probably going to be calling you next week. So, uh, I'm going to give you this, and this is one of these pastor things that we wish everyone could hear. So, I'm going to get you to read it, because I can't say this. Read it loud. Wait a minute, and especially these offering, offering envelopes. envelopes. In the words of great soccer play, player Peel, Pele. 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 Give, give of yourself till it hurts. Give of yourself <laughs> till it hurts. I think that's a wonderful sentiment for a soccer coach to hear. We welcome you. We're glad to have you as our newest member. There you go. Let us stand. So we did a lot today, and we're only five minutes late. Um, we'll have opportunity to greet Zoe and to greet Adam, to say goodbye and God's peace to Jerry and Gary. Uh, we'll all be outside in the uh, in the parking lot area and just find us. You know, we'll be resplendent in the parking, in the parking lot. lot. So. Let us receive now this benediction as we prepare to leave. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is He is Exalted.